let's learn a little bit about just how a plain vanilla bank works. So let's say that I'm an entrepreneur and I see a problem out there in the world. You have all of these hardworking people, they, you know, whatever they do, doctors, lawyers, engineers, construction workers, uh, whatever they might do, they have they work, they provide services to each other, and they have savings, right? So they right now they're just, you know, whatever. They're putting them, they're burying it in their backyard. So, you know, savings. And they're just collecting there, right? That 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 quote unquote money is doing nothing. They've they've provided some goods they've provided some goods and services to someone else. Those people gave them something, whether it's gold or a green piece of paper, that essentially says this gold or this green piece of paper entitles you to some future goods and services. And those people said, Oh, that's a useful thing that I have, let me just put it into my mattress. So whatever, the world, there's this pool of savings. And let's say there's this other um, pool of entrepreneurs. And they have a, a, a bunch of really good ideas for projects. They're like, you know what, if I could just get, uh, let me put this here, projects or investments. Projects or investments. Investments. So let's say, you know, let's say that there's some there's some other entrepreneur and he says, "Boy, you know what? I I have no claims on any goods and resources, but I have an idea. I have an idea that if I could get a bunch of people to dig canals to the crops, that we'll be able to grow more crops and grow it throughout the year and and we'll all be richer because we'll all have more food." And that's that's a true good and service in 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 its best sense. But how am I going to get these people to build this ditch for me? I mean, I can, I, I could maybe promise them in the future that once all of this is done, I can do something, give them more food. But that's not the way it works. No one's willing to work for me unless they can feel very secure that they're going to get something in return. So we have an interesting problem here. You have a bunch of people who've already provided goods and services to the world, and the world has given them trinkets, whether it's gold coins or paper money. Let's just say it's gold, right? And I want to make this point because everyone always talks about gold as if it's something special, as if it's this, as if it really represents wealth, while paper money really does not represent wealth. And that's just not true. There's nothing about gold. Gold is not useful other than the fact that it is pretty. That's the only thing that makes gold useful. Actually, it's pretty and it's hard to counterfeit. Paper money, not so pretty, but it has other advantages. It's lighter, and at least the paper money we use now is is not so easy to counterfeit. So I, I always want to make that, you know, people always somehow feel that gold is is somehow better than paper money. And then we'll talk about in the future about inflation and deflation and you know the fact that there is a constraint on how much gold can be produced, but you can print money. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So in our modern world, that savings are these green pieces of paper. But let's say we're talking about you know some primitive culture, and they're using gold. So we perform a bunch. A bunch of people perform a bunch of goods and services, and they get these. They get these little coins, and these coins are essentially this society's way of agreeing. If you have one of these coins, in the future. If you give this coin to someone else, they'll do something for you. And you know how much of that coin you have to give for them to do it? It's based on supply and demand and price. Whatever. These projects, I say, wow, if I only had, uh, if I only had some way of convincing someone to dig a canal, it would be hugely beneficial and it will create wealth or dig, an ir dig ir irrigation ditches. But how do I do that? Well, if I had gold, or if I had these little coins, I could give these pe these coins to these people. They would dig, uh, dig the irrigation ditch, and then I could charge I don't know people the service of of using my of or, or maybe you know I'll charge people access to water, and then I could essentially uh, generate a return. But how do I do that? Well, what if I could borrow some of these people? Right, these people have these units of goods and services called a, a gold coin. If I could borrow some of their money. And use it to pay people that will um, that will essentially do the good and service or do the new project. Then I'll generate wealth, and then I could share it with these people, maybe in the form of some type of interest. Well, you know, it's it's very hard in a vacuum for these people to evaluate these projects. And maybe these projects, they don't require just part of the savings of one person. They require the, the savings of, um, of a thousand people, because it's, it's a large project. And it's also hard for these people to evaluate 
who has a good project. And it's hard for these people to evaluate who has savings. In fact, if I have savings, if, I'm, if I've buried a bunch of stuff in my backyard or in my mattress, I don't want to advertise it. That's just going to uh, make people come and, and, and rob me. So I'm a third entrepreneur, and I see an opportunity for a business. And I call that business a bank. And so what is a bank going to do? What is my bank going to do? Well, let's just, let's just talk about it from the bare bones. How am I going to start my business? I'm actually, I'm actually one, of, one of these entrepreneurs. Let's say I have some savings, just to make it simple, so I don't have to go into this pool. So let's say I have a, um, a million gold coins of savings. Let's say it's a million dollars. Let me draw my balance sheet. So let's say I have, this is my balance sheet. And balance sheets, as you see, they were useful even in primitive cultures. So that's my balance sheet. And let's say initially, well, let's say initially my balance sheet, I, I drew, actually, let me, let me draw my initial balance sheet. Let's say my initial balance sheet is I put in a million, let me just draw it. I put in a million dollars of my gold coins. So. Let's just say it's a million gold. Oh, I'll say a million dollars, just because we're used to that. A million dollars, and that could you could say a gold coin is worth a dollar, so it's a million gold coins. We know that that's not true anymore. And I use that essentially to build this big um, structure of solid stone that looks really safe and, and really secure. So I use it essentially just to build a big vault, right? I'll do brown for the vault. So this is my equity, right? And I use it to build a vault, a big, nice, fancy-looking building. So I actually draw the building. It has pillars in the front. It really looks like something. It looks like an old Greek or Roman temple. And I think that's not, that's not a, an accidental appearance. So I build this nice-looking building that people would feel comfortable keeping their money in, and that could actually be safe for for safekeeping. And I tell everyone, look, I have this nice, this nice big building. Instead of having your money insecure in your backyard or your bed, why don't you put your savings in this building? And if you ever need it, you can come and get it. And on top of that. I'm going to pay you to keep your, your money with me. So everyone says, oh, that's a good deal, and Sal's trustworthy, and that more than Sal, that building looks even more trustworthy, because it looks like a Greek temple. So everyone puts their savings with me. And let's say that that is, I don't know, let's say that that is $10 million of savings in my village. I have a fairly wealthy village. So that's $10 million of deposits. This is a liability for me, right? Why is it a liability? Because I owe that to other people. They're giving it to me for safekeeping. So this is my liabilities. Liabilities. This is my equity. If I had multiple, if it wasn't just me, if there were 10 shareholders, each of us would have one tenth of this. But I'm a, this is a sole proprietorship, so this is my equity. This is my building. So what it, I'm, I'm running a business here, right? I'm not doing this as some type of nonprofit or, or charity work. So what am I going to do with this 10 million of deposits? Well, I told people that they can take the money out any time. If, if, if it, you know, I'm taking their money as safekeeping, if they put it in and then one day they can't get their money back, they're going to be very suspicious of me. So I have to keep some of the money set aside. There's a lot, you know, this, is, this could be amongst uh, three or 4,000 people. So at any given day, not everyone's, go, or hopefully not everyone's going to pull their money out or put their money in. But I need to keep some cash reserves in case people want their money back. So I need to keep some of that 10 million in cash. So let me do that in, I don't know, magenta. So let's, let me say I want to keep 10% of it in cash. So I'm going to keep $1 million in cash. And then I have $9 million left that I can hopefully put to productive use. And what I do with that $9 million is I loan it out to people who have really good projects or investments. So $9 million in loans. That's an asset, right? I give that money to someone else. They owe me $9 million. I'm essentially borrowing 10 million, keeping 1 million aside, and paying out 9 million dollars in loans. And you know, they could be a bunch of different projects. I'll, you know, it's not they could be 100. I'm not just giving 9 million dollars to one person. I'm diversifying a bunch across a, a bunch of different projects. So the natural question is, how am I making money? Well, these inv these loans, 
I'm hopefully putting them to you know build irrigation ditches or build factories or do whatever something that actually is an investment that creates more value than it needed to start up. So I can actually charge interest, and that interest should be a cut of that value that's being created. So let's say that I charge 10% on this money. So I'm charging 10%. And just for the sake of it, let's say I invest really well and no one defaults. I do it. In, this is I'm the first bank, so I get all of the best investments. So I'm getting 10%. And for their money, you know, these people not only do they get to keep their money in this nice safe deposit, but I'm also paying them 5%. I'm also paying them 5%. So how much money do I make in a year? Well, I'm 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 making 10% on this nine million dollars. So what is that? That's Nine hundred thousand dollars a year. Nine hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm bringing in, and how much am I paying out every year? Well, five percent of ten million. I'm paying out five hundred thousand dollars. So interest income nine hundred thousand dollars. Interest expense five hundred thousand. That nets me four hundred thousand. And let's say I pay another, I don't know, hundred thousand for salaries and for security guards and all of that. So essentially, I'm netting. Three hundred thousand dollars. So I'm netting three hundred thousand dollars. I'll do that in a little more detail in the next video. But if you look at it big picture, I put a million dollars in, and every year I'm making three hundred thousand dollars by providing the service, by matching up the savings with good investments, and everyone benefits. The pie is getting bigger because these are real investments that are going to benefit my village. And of course, these people benefit. Because they get safekeeping for their accounts, and their money is actually growing. They're actually participating in this in this capital investment. Anyway.